Okay, Claire, sorry to get this out so late for you, but uh, I had some difficulty. I can't find my pen, so I've had to present this in a little different way. We talked about enzyme kinetics. Now we want to speak on the inhibition. And there are three main types of inhibition that you should be familiar with. Competitive, uh, uncompetitive, and non-competitive inhibition. Now each inhibition changes your normal michaelis menten equation by alpha. Okay, in the case of competitive inhibition, the KM, or substrate concentration, to give you half the maximum is affected by the inhibitor. Uncompetitive inhibition affects Vmax as well as KM. And non-competitive inhibition affects Vmax and KM. And let's look at these uh, types of inhibition illustrated in the Lineweaver Burke plot. Now you recall that we determine the Michaelis Minton uh, behavior of enzymes by plotting a V0, initial velocity, versus substrate concentration. And if we get a hyperbolic curve, which like this one here, I'm trying to draw with my mouse, where we reach saturation or maximum velocity, or approach that maximum velocity, and from this we can uh, d estimate we can estimate km which is which is half half the maximum velocity and that substrate concentration that gives you that half maximum velocity so we went through all of this but if we take the double reciprocal plot or we we take a double reciprocal of the equation and we can plot those values and get a line going from a hyperbolic to a linear um, relationship between the reciprocal of V0 and the reciprocal of substrate concentration. We want to get a line because it's easier to interpret uh, and we can estimate Vmax and Km more accurately if our enzyme displays michaelis menten kinetics. So the slope of this line is equal to Km over Vmax. Alright, this is for the uninhibited reaction. Y is equal to, the letter Y is equal to uh, 1 over V0. And I spoke already of Km over Vmax as a slope, a 1 over substrate concentration is our x plus V. Okay? And B is B is 1 over V Vmax. So we have the equation for a line. The slope helps us to determine Km and Vmax because we get the slope from the equation for the line. And also the y-intercept is equivalent to 1 over Vmax. So for competitive inhibition, we'll notice that our Km increases, increases in this direction. And that increases uh, by alpha. Alpha times Km equals Km apparent. And, in, and apparent means the apparent Km value for uh, the inhibitor. Okay, so this would be the apparent Km. This would be the Km. The second type of inhibition is uncompetitive inhibition. Here's our equation for the line. And in this case, both our 
B max and our KM changes. The KM decreases and B max decreases in both cases. Um, in in uh, uncompetitive inhibition, and they decrease by this alpha value. And so alpha, as in the first slide, can be calculated by one plus concentration of inhibitor used divided by Ki. All right, and so we can determine what Ki is uh, by rearranging this equation such that inhibitor divided by alpha minus 1. Okay, so we can determine Ki if we know alpha and an inhibitor concentration. And so this is the nature of uncompetitive inhibition. Both Vmax and Km decrease. And lastly, non-competitive inhibition uh, is sometimes also referred to as mixed because there's an alpha uh, prime, put a prime on this one, and an alpha one may affect the, in the uh, maximum velocity. In this case, it goes uh, down. And in the other case, the Km substrate concentration, to give us a half max, goes up. And that's not always the case. Sometimes the, uh, the Km will go down. And so that's usually typical of two different uh, inhibitors, I and I prime, or one inhibitor that may function uh, at two different sites on the enzyme. And again, Km and Vmax are both affected by um, this type of inhibitor. Okay, and uh, lastly I wanted to just re remind you to understand Kcat. How do we define the catalytic constant or the catalytic uh, or turnover number, I should say, turnover number. Uh, that's why we take the maximum velocity. Okay, V max. And divide into it the total amount of enzyme used in the assay. Okay, we can, we, we can know the turnover or how many, many substrates interact with enzyme to be converted to product. Also, uh, catalytic efficiency. How efficient is an enzyme? This is a value that is often used for the, the actually the effect of inhibitors or activators on the, on the function of that enzyme. If we take that Kcat value and divide it by the substrate concentration that gives you half maximum Km. This will give you the efficiency of that enzyme catalyzed reaction. All right, and uh, that should be it. So review this and part one, and I'll see you in class.